Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, so this is one of those situations where it's like, man, I don't want to be, I don't want to betray, betray everything we've been talking about, but it's one of those situations where my boy Les is in town. I haven't seen him in years, and I guess his car broke down, and he needs to get somewhere to lay his head down and shower and all of that, and he asks if he can come through right now and do that. It's like 7 in the morning on the day of when the sheriffs have the right to come to my door. I told him, I'm like, you know, we ain't talk, but he doesn't really understand, you know, he, he doesn't know my situation at all. So it's like, brother, I would love to be able to do that for you, but I also got the responsibilities. I can't have you sprawled out on my floor on the day I need to be able to move. I got other things I need to do. Now, granted, the appointment I need to go to can very easily be canceled and all of that, but it's just the point. It's like, yo, in the midst of all of my struggle and everything I need, now I'm in a position to help somebody else that I really, really appreciate in life. I ain't spoke to in over 10 years, but that's my brother. But it's like, I did not know you were in town. I certainly wasn't ready for this and certainly not today. So it's just one of those situations where I'm asking the Lord to give me the strength to, to do the right thing, to not let this situation get me started off on the wrong foot with my energy. Because now I'm turning people away that I really would like to help. But I really don't want to be inconvenienced in this way right now at the last minute. You know what I mean? And it's like he's giving me the the the, the you know the, the normal circumstances for which this needs. He needs to be able to get, you know what I mean? He's in from Texas. So it's like, this is my bro. His mom, his sister, they, they're my family. They are my family. But I haven't spoken to him in a long time. And he don't really know my situation. And... It's just the, literally the worst day for this. It's literally the worst day for this. You know what I mean? He wants to shower. He wants to lay down. He wants to get some sleep. It's like, brother, I got to get the hell out of here. You know what I mean? I got to move. Like, not only just for the day, but period. Like, this is where we at. Today is the day where they get to put the scarlet letter on my door. So it's like, yo, this is the very worst day for this. And I can't, can't say yes. I can't say yes. I cannot say yes. I want to say yes for the for the betterment of my his circumstances, but for what it is I got going on, nah. <laughs> the sheriff's gonna come in and see him what laid on the floor, on the damn supposed to be evicted. Ain't nobody ever lived here but me. Why would I do? Why would that be this day? This day? Oh, don't think so. And then it's just about you know the smallness of this apartment, obviously, and then just the awkwardness of it all. I don't prefer it. Y'all know my mental health. You know what I mean? I don't prefer it. Now, it doesn't mean that that's an excuse for not giving somebody what they need. If I was here all day or if I was expecting them to have a busy day, if I wasn't taking my walks, you know, it would be a little different in regards to how I see it. But with the fact that I got all this going on, mental health, no car, no job, no Wi-Fi, it ain't nothing even for him to do but lay down to sleep in this apartment. Just to come back to have to move stuff around, I mean, it's like, you know, maybe he can help me move. Maybe that's the idea, but it's like, dog, I don't think... I don't think I could really do nothing for him other than uh, inconvenience the entire situation that I need to be doing, moving around and stuff like that, you know. So that's really where my head's at. I just feel like this is yeah, one of those situations where maybe I'm being tested. Maybe I need to do this for the betterment of my energy. Obviously, I would want him to do it for me in this situation, and I think he would, which makes it uh, that much more poignant that I get this right. But at the same time, it's like I can't find myself letting my boy in at 7 in the morning with me needing to get up out of here in a minute. No telling if the scarlet letter comes and at that point I got to go straight to the courthouse. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done, including me moving stuff around in this house. I'm just not up for what I need to do in regards to to allow my friend to sleep here. You know, during the day, I, I don't have it in me for what it is I'm looking at to be able to bestow that grace upon my friend. And that that sucks, right? That makes me a horrible human. And I think that's the purpose of it. <laughs> I think that's the purpose of the circumstance to either force me to do something that's going to inconvenience my situation completely or back me into a situation where I'm not helpful at all to someone who needs my help. So it's like, I'm not up for this. I don't want this burden. And I don't feel like that's a good thing to say either. You know what I mean? It just is what it is. I got too much on my plate to want to try to do more than I can. And this, what he's asking, I ain't let nobody be in here at all. The whole eight years I've been here, my boy T came over twice. And maybe, maybe some people came in to fix stuff. That's it. Everybody, ain't nobody else living here, sleep here, no capacity. So that's another thing that I have to be honest about with all of y'all. I don't really know, you know what I'm saying? I'm not comfortable with people in my space, especially people I have not seen in over 10 years, nor spoken to in a couple years. Like, 
I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, nah, bro. That's that's truly how I feel, and that's not the right way to feel, because that's a real friend of mine. His people's my real people's. They would be disappointed in me and how I feel, but I'm going to be transparent with everybody. This ain't the day. Now, if it would have been a different day, if I had my car, if I had a job, so I know I wouldn't be in the house, then yeah, come through. While I'm gone, sleep on the floor. Sleep in the bed, bro. Sleep, you know what I mean? I'm not. Take a shower, all that. But the fact that I don't know what my schedule is like, I'm here all day long, except for the fact that I shouldn't be, and I got to figure stuff out, and now I got to entertain. Nah, that's not. Nah. That's just not smart on my part from what it is that I got to do. Plus, y'all know me. I got to do content, draft day, all that. I want my space, man. I ain't trying to be stepping over people on this day. So, Lord, help me. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Lead a boy stranded? And how's that going to help my energy? How's that help my responsibility uh, as a person in your camera? You know, looking at me saying, be good, bless your energy, all that. But sometimes it comes to a situation where the convenience that you, the inconvenience that it's going to provide you will make you have to say no based on what it is you have to do. You know what I mean? And I think I've run into a little bit of that. And the other half of it is just me being not so good of a human, I guess is what you call it. I don't know, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I'm supposed to do it. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. And I tell everybody watching me. I don't want to do it, and it ain't got nothing to do with anything other than the fact that there's too much going on right now. I've been overwhelmed the whole time, and I don't want to move around any more than I already have to right now. And with my boy coming in, I have to adjust my mind to that. I got to adjust my situation to that. I got to adjust my day to that, and all of that I'm just not up for at the last minute. Now, if you would have told me three days ago this was coming, boom, I'm ready. But me, spontaneous stuff, this head, nah, I ain't enough for that. So how do I not be a bad person? <laughs> well, I tell you, I give it to God. Hey, Holy Spirit, will you help me with this? Clearly, this is a conundrum that's supposed to either make me hate what it is that I'm doing or be angry about something that ain't got nothing to do with my business. May you make it so that my boy can get somewhere to rest. And if that place is here, I speak life into that. But as far as everything else right now, I got too much on my plate to be moving my mental around to fit what needs to be done. In a situation like this, I just ain't got it. It ain't there. I am sorry. <laughs> okay? How do I tell people that I'm not that great of a human? When it comes to stuff like this, this is what's got me into trouble in the past. It's not opening my door for other people. You know what I mean? Literally. I think it made it so that I deserve what it is I'm going through. And for me to go through this on this day, it's like, well, yeah, it's a problem. Because it's, a, it's an inconvenience to my brain, which is what I'm always protecting against. I don't, you know what I mean? It's a little awkward with my boy. That particular boy, we got some history that's a little awkward, so I got to prepare my mind for that, too. I don't know if I'm really dealing with that during this stress. You know what I'm saying? It's that real. It's that real, and, and I'll tell anybody, including him. Hope you see this video someday. It's like, bro, I, I wrestled with this. You needed me to come through, and once again, I may have fallen short for reasons that don't have nothing to do with me being a, a great human being, and I don't like that. But uh, what I also don't like is what's in front of me has just been sprung on me last minute. I don't like that. And then the, the guilt trip that comes with having to do it. I don't like that. And the fact that I haven't seen my guy in 10 years and now he's popping up at my doorstep. I don't like that. <laughs> Living, growing up in L.A., when you ain't talked to nobody that long and they just pop up at your doorstep with a story. Mm, I don't like that. <laughs> See, this is the stuff about the situation, even though that's my boy. Love him to death, love his family, trust his family. I ain't talked to him in a long time. So it's just a lot that goes together that makes me say, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't do this. I don't want to do this. And maybe I deserve to burn in hell for that. Maybe that's the problem with me. Maybe that's why I deserve everything I'm going through. Because of situations like this when I say no. Truthfully. Man, so rather than to wrestle with it on my own, I bring it straight to y'all. I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. If you are like that, and you don't like doing things that inconvenience you, that sometimes help other people, just know you're not alone. That don't, make me, that don't make you the greatest person in the world, nor does it make me a good person. But we got to get through this together. We got to get better at welcoming the right energy while simultaneously not inconveniencing ourselves in whatever circumstances that are already immensely stressful. This, what I'm going through, is immensely stressful. That, what it is he's asking me to do, is just going to pile it on just a little bit more for this particular brain. And while that's very selfish, extremely selfish, given the fact that he's probably tired as hell, needs somewhere to go, cars messed up, got a lot on his mind, all the way out of state, even though he's from out here, that's not, he ain't out here now, so I get it. But he thought I lived on the other side of town. You know, he was asking if he could stay over where I used to stay. That's how long it's been since we talked. He thought I was somewhere I ain't been in over 10 years. 
And he found I'm not there. He's like, all right, can I come over there? I'm like, nah, but not nah. You know what I mean? But nah. So this is me saying nah to y'all. And I think I must up the courage to say the same thing to him. I'm cool, bro. I'm cool. I gave him the address. So if he pop up, I'll let him in. But this ain't a situation where I feel comfortable about that. And this ain't a situation where I want to deal with anything more stressful than what I'm already dealing with. I kid you not. I don't even have it in me to do that. Now, if this were a normal day, if it were moving day, you know, I'd be like, oh, cool. This man can help me move. Selfishly, awful with speaking, but that's the truth. All right, I need the bodies for sure. But if it ain't nothing to do but lay around, smoke weed or drink something or... Brother, I'm telling you, for all that I got going on with my energy, all these prayers I've been praying, I ain't up for nothing that's going to be foreign in energy. And that's another reason. It's another reason. I don't know. Just being honest, I don't know. And so for me, it's like, I, I don't know what spirit people be in. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. So for me, I'm, I'm cool. Like I said, I gave him the address. If you want to show up, I won't tell him. I won't turn him away. But as far as me saying, yeah, come on over. It's fine. I'm not going to even lie to you guys and tell you that's what it is. I'm wrestling with this and I'm leaning toward. It's just too much going on, bro. It's just too much going on. If I had a normal head, maybe it'd be a lot easier for me to say yes to this. But apparently, that's in the way. Apparently, that's in the way for real. And I, I told him, my mental health ain't been right. I told him the situations ain't been right. I told him what today is for me. So, it's just, it reminds me of that lady who said to me on the street. I don't think I got her on camera, but I told you about it. She was like, and I told her I only got $1 in my pocket. She was like, can you have, can I have that? I'm like, no, you cannot have my last dollar. No, <laughs> no. No, and that's kind of how this feels. Not not that serious, but kind of feel that way. Do you tell somebody you're going through a million different things, and they say, "Well, you, can you still help me?" It's like I would like to be able to. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to be able to do. I want to get to a point where this and this can help all of us. You know what I'm saying? Including him and his family, because they're people that I dream of helping. Which is why this is so ironic. <laughs> but like, as far as me inconvenience myself in this mindset with this day being as it is, I. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, I don't, I don't I don't think that that's where my heart is at. I don't think that's where the Lord has allowed me to soften up and be a better human. I still think that's a very, very much of a point where I need to grow. And so that's why I tell everybody, man, I fall short. This is why I tell y'all don't look at me as no damn holy man. Don't, do not. Because I've found myself struggling with my mental health in such a way that I end up with burdens like this on my plate. And I usually fail. I usually, tell, I usually turn people away, for sure. And and while I never regret it, because whatever could go wrong never does because I do it, what also goes wrong is people look at you like, you ain't that good of a friend. And I ain't. I ain't. I know I ain't. That's why I say to myself, I would like to be a better friend. I'm trying to teach people how to be a better friend. And my mother was a wonderful friend. But me, I I try to protect myself from energies that are going to make me feel worse. That's what I've been dealing with my whole life. And this is exactly that. Not to say that it's going to turn out that way. It's just like every other anxiety or every other anticipation circumstance. I psych myself out of the blessing. Or psych myself out of doing it. Or whatever. So that's what it is. Sometimes you get situations where your friends will ask you to do things that you cannot do. And then they will double down on it. Because they know for a fact that if they bend you, you will do it. I am not wired that way. And I think it frustrates certain people. But I, I can't change about myself. I'm too stubborn. I'm, I'm a Leo. You understand what I'm saying? My, my territory is just that. And uh, it's, par it's partially why I was so stubborn is to find myself in the movement I'm in, the ape movement. Because I'm stubborn and I'm going to go all the way down with it and that's it. And so that's kind of how I am in regards to certain things that inconvenience me or make me feel uncomfortable. And that's what this is. So I just let people know, man, I'm not ashamed of my weaknesses. Because I know if I'm going to ever strengthen them, I got to be able to see myself in this light. Man, most importantly, know why stuff is coming your way. Oh, you getting hit by life? Cool. Remember when you turned your friend away? That's why. But you didn't want to. And, and, and God didn't want to. And that's how that often goes. But at the same time, it's like, well, I can only be me. And at the same time, with everything I got on my plate, I don't think much good can happen uh, from, from me inconveniencing myself and further stressing myself. It's only going to make me less, less worthy of, not worthy, but less uh, likely to move. It's according to what it is I've shown myself. So that's one of the excuses I'm telling myself, man, at the end of the day, I just don't want to be inconvenienced. 
I just don't. I really don't. Not on a day where I'm stressed to hell. I don't. So I hope for God to forgive me. Hope for less to forgive me. Family, forgive me. Everybody, forgive me. Because I'm just not in the space right now where I can be my best and do what it is that they ask me to do. I just can't do it. Especially in this little bitty house where there ain't no rooms in here. There's no rooms. Now, if it was a one-bedroom, cool. Sit in the bedroom. You're good. But, nah. Nah, I'm just going to be stepping over you. I'm stepping around you. Stretching my head trying to figure out how to be comfortable. I'm already stressed out in this damn house trying to figure out what the hell to do. And I ain't going to be able to lay around because of you. If it comes to that. Or I ain't going to be able to do what I need to do. Call because you sleep. I'm not gonna make, you know, I'm going out the house and I really know. Hey, ain't nothing to eat. Ain't no fridge in here. That's another thing. You ain't got no fridge. So it's like you're going to be inconvenienced to hell because you're going to have to live like I've been living. Nah, you ain't going to want to do that. Not even five minutes. So it's like, yeah, I got to tell them how this has been, how bad it's been. You want to use Wi-Fi? I ain't no Wi-Fi. You want to use TV? I ain't no TV. You want, like, all that. I don't feel like explaining all that stuff on the day. I got to, like, see what I'm saying? It's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. It ain't just, I don't want you to come to my comfortable abode. And this ain't my comfortable abode. Man, they about to kick me out of here today if they want to or at any point in time after this moment. So it's like, bro, uh-uh, no. I don't have a home for you to come to. Technically, that's what I'm trying to go look for. So, no. BDL44, thank you all for watching.